two quick questions. Yes. So you've been described as somebody who pushes boundaries and you don't follow trends and you follow your own mind. Accurate? Yes, that's accurate. I do think you've gotten bolder as you've gotten older. Yes, it's how I've lived. Thank you so much. And I much. will live for as long as I live. What I took away from my mom basically was an openness and I guess self-confidence, whether it was an old master painting or sculpture or cutting edge furniture, if she saw something and she responded to it, there was no question about whether it would appreciate, whether it this or that, and that is fundamentally a fearless approach. I think the first thing to understand about Hester's collection is that it was never static, and she really was a fearless person. When she found something new that she liked and she didn't have enough room on the wall, out it went. It was always about this relationship, very much living relationship. Her opinions, her feelings, her knowledge. She wanted it to always be evolving, to always be growing, to always be changing. She was the most indomitably curious person that I think I've ever known, and I think this was very clear in the collection that she formed. There was nothing normative about it, nothing predictable about it. There was always an exploration. She was super determined. She was always game to make new decisions and come up with new ideas. And by the end of her life, I mean, she was no less fearless. She was just the same. She was also fearless about people. She wanted to meet somebody, she met them. She knew every curator, every museum director, everybody internationally who had anything to do with art at the highest level, she knew them. Fear was just not even something that was on the table for her, my mom uh, did it her way, that is for sure. Just off Fifth Avenue stands the spanking new home of a nationally important institution, the New York Museum of Modern Art. MoMA was a very exciting place to be, and that's where I really got caught and stuck on art. My mother was born in 1928 in the Bronx. Her father actually had been reasonably wealthy and lost all his money in the Depression. She was always really smart, got into Hunter High School and then Hunter College. It was the beginning of World War II, and the government had requisitioned the building that Hunter High School was in, so all of high school had to be over by 1 p.m. She started wandering around Manhattan looking for interesting things to do, and she found art museums. There was very little to read about modern art at that time, and I would spend a very long time standing in one gallery at MoMA trying to figure it out myself, and that actually was the most wonderful thing that could have happened to me at that age. She met my father on a street corner at a bus stop in the Bronx and introduced my dad to going to museums and they started just going to all the galleries, being at all the openings, going to hang out at the Cedar Bar, which is what you did at the time, and being, you know, young people hanging out in the art world despite the fact that they had to pay the rent. There were lots of dealers in New York at that time who would sell you pictures for $25 a month to be paid out over an indefinite period. And we owed $25 a month all over town. Later in life, I'd ask my mom about it, like, you know, how did you and Deb end up in this art world around all these incredible abstract expressionist painters? And she'd sort of laugh and she'd just be like, look, we would keep showing up. So if you'd keep showing up, you would get invited. And they just immersed themselves in art, eventually became their full-time careers. And she also, from the beginning, loved the idea of juxtaposing various things that you quote unquote weren't supposed to do. Her first signature style became very cutting edge modern paintings and very classical English furniture. You walked in and say, what's going on here? But somehow it worked. My dad passed away in 1982. He was quite young, he was in his mid-50s, and this is all very sudden and shocking. Hester married my father in around 1983 and decided that she wanted to start collecting again. At that point, she had this 
phenomenal collection of modern art. And the prices have really gone up exponentially, so she couldn't really afford what was currently on her walls, and she was certainly never one to go for second best. And so I lived with this situation of being the guardian of this fantastic collection, but kind of boring for me because there was no action. And that did not please me because I really am a collector. So she decided that she wanted to form a new collection. And the question was, what was it going to be? She considered antiquities, she considered a few other fields, and she settled on old masters. All of a sudden, my mom starts putting old master paintings on the wall. We were pretty shocked. We were kind of against all this old master stuff happening. but. You know, it was mom, she was gonna do what she was gonna do. And there came a very dark day when all the modern paintings were sent to the dining room and the rest of the house was old master paintings. And we knew that that was the beginning of the end. And I think she was a little unhappy with that because it, it to her that seemed a little boring. And she called me up and she said, I suddenly realized my modern art doesn't mean the same thing to me anymore. I'm gonna sell it, I'm gonna sell all of it. Once the swap out was complete, she had a house full of 18th and 19th century English furniture. And she started to think that this was looking much too normal, as she would put it, much too tasteful. That's always the enemy. This is so, so Hester Diamond. I didn't see her for a couple of months, and I go over, everything is gone. It was all very dramatic and very forcefully decided, and people don't do that very much particularly not in their 80s, which is when she did it. My stepbrother, Michael, introduced her to Jim Walrod, who was a designer, a decorator, and they put together this new wild environment with the psychedelic colors and all different kinds of textures and fabrics and shapes and sizes. And the only rule of thumb was she wanted everything in the apartment to have been created in the new century. It was just like a visionary thing to do. She just had an idea and, you know, she went with it. You walked in, it was a jolt. And I don't think anybody walking into that apartment thought, oh, that's nice. They thought, wow, what's going on here? And I think that's Hester. She always said, you can't get depressed in this living room. At that point in her life, she's had some hardship and she just wanted to be in this completely new, happy, uplifting environment. She always instilled in her kids this general idea that learning something new is much more fun than doing something you know how to do well over and over again. Once you've mastered something, it's time to move on. I had amazing experiences with her transitions. At the time I met her, she owned the fantastic Brancusi Burden Space. And one day I go to, to visit and it's not there. And I noticed around the same time, I think, uh, Marble by Pietro and John Lorenzo Bernini of Autumn, not in its place, but let's say that was the movement from a genius and giant of the 20th century to one of the greatest sculptors of all time, Bernini. The picture that I love the best is the Peter Kucke van Elst, a Antwerp artist from the early 16th century. He was so inspired at this age. He was such a beautiful painter. And it's in such remarkable condition that you just see everything that the artist put on it in 1525. It's a very rare thing to have a complete triptych like this. And when she bought it, it was a tribute to the master of 1518, who is a much less important artist than Peter Koch of Annals. About two years later, there was an exhibition at the Metropolitan Museum on this artist. And in fact, when you walked into the exhibition, it was one of the first paintings that you saw. Her relationship with the Met was one that was a personal one among each of us. Hester was a figure all of us thought would be the ideal mother to have. Each year at the end of the year, there was always a gift to the department to use for whichever of the activities you think would be most useful for. The thing that was as great as her love of art was her love of people and the way she combined it all. As friends go, for me, they don't come any better. People loved her and she really reached out into the art world. It's an exciting sale to have. And I think people are very much looking forward to seeing it. I've never been interested in having a static collection. We just did it in the most irrational way. We loved something, we bought it. And that's what I've done all my life.